Good evening, friends, and welcome to Let's Talk About Ice Show, coming live from Coffs Harbour. And we're very excited tonight because this is our first show um, from Coffs Harbour. Um, and um, we, we have a, an interesting format tonight, and, and, and basically, as you can see, there's three of us. And we are going to compare a con and contrast our journey in recovery, in addiction and in recovery, you know, uh, the differences as well as the similarities. And, and, and in the hopes of you might be able to relate to a story and find out, you know, in, in, in your own journey or in your family's journey who's suffering drug addiction. Tonight's host um, is Ben, but before I give, you, give him the floor, I just want to thank um, some sponsors. First up is want to um, thank Drug Safe Workplace, who did the drug testing for our staff in the Gold Coast recently, um, Mercer and Cooper Realty, Gardner Cars, uh, Rotaries International, Lions Club for blankets and crockery that were given recently for an outreach program up in the Gold Coast. Um, in Coffs Harbour, I want to thank the Rotary Club Daybreak for a recent donation they made. Um, the Coffs Rotary, um, the Rotary Club Coffs Harbour, uh, as opposed to the Rotary Club Daybreak. Um, and finally, the Salvation Army, who is our partners in, in our efforts here in, in the community. And we're currently utilizing these beautiful premises here, the Salvation Army Coffs Harbor Corps. Um, and, and, and last but not the least, I just want to extend my sincere gratitude to uh, this gentleman, Matthew Miller. He's um, from Adele House, and he is the person whose the technical expertise made all this possible tonight. Um, also, I just want to remind you guys, for those who need help and support right now, please remember our hotline, 1-800-NO-2-ICE. So that's 1-800-NO-2-ICE. So 1-800-668-6423. We have a support staff that will help um, will answer your calls and will field to individuals who have lived experience who might be able to help you out there in the community. Um, I, without further ado, I'm going to give you to Ben. Thank you, Jose. Um, my name's Ben. Um, I'm part of the AAIC um, group down in Coffs Harbour. Um, and, it, you know, what an honour it is for, um, for me to be able to come on and, and talk about ICE um, in the hope that it can reach out and, and help some, someone listening tonight. So... Um, you know, if, if um, you've got questions, send them in. We want to hear, hear about it. If we can't answer them, we'll find out. Um, but, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an honour for me to uh, be a recovering addict and to be able to um, pass on my help to, to others. Um, tonight, we will be interviewing Trent. This is Trent here. Um, and, and like Jose said, um, there's, there's, amongst the three of us, there's different stories um, you know, in our recovery journey. So, um, you know, like, like as I said, we can compare and co contrast um, where what's, what's worked for us and what hasn't worked. And, um, and, you, and hopefully the listeners out there, they, they can relate in some form. So, um, so we'll, we'll begin the interview um, with you, Trent. Tell us a bit about yourself, um, Trent. Um, where, you come, where do you come from? Hello everyone, um, yes. my name's Trent, I'm an addict. Um, my, my, my journey started on the Central Coast. Um, I've done a lot of speed up there, which it progressed to um, ice. Um, ice was a game changer for me. Um, it fueled my um, crime addiction as well. and. Um, that's where I, I'd, I'd commit crime to, to get ice and when I'd get on ice it would change my mental health. Like um, I would, um, I don't know, like I'd, I'd gamble, I'd drink, I'd um, just do a lot of silly stuff to maintain that addiction and um, it wasn't a healthy lifestyle. I um, found jail like pretty quick, like I'd been to jail on, on speed, but like when I hit ice, I would, it became an open door for me. And, um, How old were you when you first started using ice? Uh, I, I dabbled with it when I was about 21 to start with. Like that was the age that it first hit. And, and how, did, how was that introduced to Trent? Oh, just through um, 
because I already had the um, the um, the speed, like yeah, the connections with the speed and like you know like it. Yeah, Ice was um, introduced to me through another addict, like right. like through an dealer, and um, like at the start, like there was I was told that it was heaps addictive, and you know, and still I tried it, but I I it, it didn't start. I didn't, yeah, I stuck with the speed like for a while, and, but when I had a, yeah, yeah, and it, it, it ended up getting me in the end, like, and, um, yeah, and I lost everything for that. So, Ben asked a very interesting question about who introduced it to you, because, you know, and, and, and your situation, you progressed, and it was an addict who introduced it to you. Most of us, uh, m most addicts, you know, it was through deal dealer. What was your story, Ben? Um, I would have been about 15 years old, um, and I think uh, a couple of boys in my um, year at school, they, they'd started experimenting with it, um, and um, I found myself with them one weekend, and um, the, the drug was there, and the opportunity to, to um, try the drug, um, and, you know, they, of course, they, these are people, they've, they've probably had it a couple of times before that, and they they probably would have said to me, you know, you'll be fine and these sort of things, but, you know, how much do they really know about this drug? And, um, you know, the, the long-term effects. So um, that's when I was first introduced to it. I, so, um, yeah, I would have been about 15. I think before that I would have been I was smoking marijuana. Um, so I would have started that about 11 or 12. Um, so, uh, and that, yeah... Same as Trent, I, uh, it was the speed first because that's that the ice um, wasn't really um, that prevalent at that time, um, and so um, and that went on to. <coughs> I mean, I, I, I think my heavy heavy usage it, it started um, probably in my early twenties, um, but between the age of fifteen and, and twenty, um, I probably you know. It was just a recreational thing on the weekends. Um, it was probably more drinking and smoking marijuana. So um, that was my introduction to ice. Um, <coughs> and I noticed, you know, just just with the um, introduction of ice and and and, and the, the how they've they've de designed it. Um, um, in in my um, early youth, um, it was um, mainly ingested, snorted, or or injected. Um, it didn't come um, till later. T t they started making it in a smokable form. Um, uh, it was a, a dealer or an, a fellow addict introduced to you, um, and in your case, um, peers, and yeah, you, you yeah. progress. You know, in my case, it, it was um, it wasn't a dealer that introduced it to me. I, I was actually working in finance um, as, as a professional, and another banking person introduce it to me. And I just want to put that distinction in there because for parents out there, you know, when your children actually dabble in this, or if you know, if you have a, a family member, it may not necessarily necessarily come from a person who is already an addict. It's maybe a friend or a close family member who's also experimenting in this drug. And, you know, in, in, in life we have happy times and we have sad times. Um, and you know, when, when we have sad times, so we, we tend to experiment. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And um, also, the, the pe these people that, are, um, that introduce us to this drug, um, you, you know, they could be, like you say, a, a family member or, you know, a close friend. And they may try to educate you on what this drug does, but um, even they are ill-informed. Um, and I guess that's where, where the... Um, the anti-ice campaign comes into. We're here to educate people. Um, we're here to share stories, and we're here to um, share solutions um, for for recovery in this um, in this drug. Um, so, so Trent, what effects did it did it have on you, like in regards to like financially and emotionally, relationships, um, etc. Et well. Were Financially, you, like in 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 that, like I, I was homeless for a, a long period of time. Like I did a lot of lounge surfing, like right. and um, 
just le leeching off people. Um, so you would have been on a welfare ben benefit at that time? I was on, yeah, New Start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, the, the drug itself, it's quite expensive. And, and as I understand from information today, it's, it's even more expensive. So um, if you were uh, couch surfing, you, you probably weren't putting money on rent or anything. It would have pretty much gone on um, on the drug itself, I imagine. Oh, everything went, like, that's, your life, life just revolves around getting on, like, mm. yeah, like everything you do, like even making your bed mm. from the morning you wake, as soon as you open your eyes, it's like, you live in a mess, the only time you make your bed is after you've had that, of a smoke, I used intravenously, but, um, yeah, like, it, it, it tried to sort of made life seem a bit easier, it didn't really make it, but it just seemed... It was a quick fix, fix for that moment, I guess. Oh, yeah, like, I had no self-esteem with it. Yeah. We're gonna, I'm going to interject here, and I, I'm just going to quickly talk about this concept of rock bottom, yeah? Because rock bottom is, um, is different from addict to, to addict, but at the same time, it is very similar from one addict to, to another. Um, what was your rock bottom? Honestly, um, I've, I've recently found out I don't think there is a rock bottom. Like, I don't... I, There's I think always it, a basement, isn't there? Well, I, I just see a bottomless pit. Like, um, I'm, I'm lucky to be clean yeah. today. Like, I've, I've got a couple, of, a couple of days up, like, or a couple of weeks up. But, um, yeah, like... I just saw a progressive downward spiral, like, and yeah, I didn't want to take that path this time. I, I, I've got a better life being clean and staying away from it, like, but mm -hmm. they're a rock bottom, like, I don't know what that is. I just see things just get what progressively worse. That's that's a very good good point you just said. Um, but there, there is, I believe, there is a state that we call rock bottom, and that is a place where addicts find themselves saying, my gosh, I've had enough and, and I want to stop, but I don't have the answers and I don't know how to do this and I need help. Mm. Um, you, know, you probably would have arrived at that point and we're clean, we're here talking today and you're clean. Yeah. So at some point, there was a time when you realized I've had enough yeah. and I don't have the answers and I need help. What was yeah. yours? Yeah, for, for me, it was, um, it was probably, it's around uh, 12 months from now. Um, and oh, so 12 months ago, I, I just got off a, um, a, um, a, a, some charges that could have put me in, in jail. Um, and I think if I had have went um, it was into jail, that would have been rock bottom there. But um, after that, I had a parole period. Um, I was living up in Toowoomba and I, um, I was required to stay there. And um, I was still um, in active addiction. Um, and and I was living in a um, a shipping container, um, and it was one of these yards where it shut from six um, in, in the evening to six in the morning, and so I'd sneak in there at night, and I'd, I'd stay in one of these shipping containers, and I was using, um, and that was in Toowoomba last year in winter, which was, and it was a very cold winter that year, um, so you can imagine I was in, inside this metal box um, in the middle of winter in Toowoomba. And I was freezing, um, <clears throat> and I, I remember thinking, "This is what it's come to. Um, I, I, I have to do my um, uh, parole period um, and stay here for six months." Um, and I'm lucky that I didn't go to jail, but that was rock bottom for me. And I, I just thought to myself, "I was brought up better than this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I owe it to my family. I owe it to myself." Um, and I, I actually come down to Coffs Harbour because my family's in Coffs Harbour, and um, and I, by, um, I, I was um, ordered by parole not to leave the state, and I had another another two months to go. But I got to a point where I was I'd had enough. I was freezing cold, um, and I needed help. And I'm just fortunate enough to have a, a loving mother and family that um, that were able to um, help me. Um, so, in saying that, I didn't actually go to the rehab. I've never, um, <coughs> a couple of years previous, 
to that, my mother wanted to put me into um, rehab in, in Adele House, but um, I wasn't ready for that and I took off back up to the Gold Coast and I was, you know, carrying on. But um, as far as rock bottom goes, um, you know, I'd, b b the lead up to all that, I'd had some, um, I was suffering from um, relationship breakdowns and, um, yeah, it got to that point where I said, enough's enough. I got on the phone to mum and I said, look, I'm coming down there. I've got two months on my parole to go, but, um, you know, I I'm coming home. So that was, um, that was my rock bottom. Um, and I imagine yours was quite different to, um, to that. My, my, that? Look, my, I'll put it simply, my rock bottom was, uh, you talk about prison and I, I've, I've, been, I've done that. I was 13 years at Attic and I've, I've spent eight years in prison in and out. But my, I, I never thought there was a rock bottom because I was never interested in giving up eyes. You know, um, I, I enjoyed it too much. Uh, and it was that awareness that my life, you know, is that awareness that there's something wrong with my life. And what, how that turned up is I w was released on bail by drug court and I was sent to a rehab in Coffs Harbour with nothing but a black garbage bag with donated clothes. And, uh, um, and I was walking through the airport um, and I'm looking at other passengers with a luggage and here I, I, I was at a time at 45 years of age and the sum total of my life was a black garbage bag and the contents of which didn't even belong to me. So I, right there and then, it was that awareness of maybe there's something wrong in my life and I need help. And the first place that I reached out was at drug and alcohol rehab. Um, and, and I'm going to give it a plug because that was a place that I actually got clean. And it was, it was a Dell house in, in Coffs Harbour. Um, I, you know, I, the, the people running the program when I was there, it was a program that actually worked for an ice addict like me. But um, I'm digressing, but it's interesting you, you talk about um, going to prison and the financial side of things because George Patrickis, um, and I, you know, from, he's a psychologist, and he talks about this in his, in, in his lectures on cycles of, of addiction. You know, first we experiment, and then, and, and then we realize, okay, that's actually quite nice. And I'm going to just use this drug socially, you know, maybe once a month or, or twice a week, you know. And then what happens, something happens in our life um, that are crises, you know, a, a loss in relationship or, or a fight with a missus or um, a problem at work. So suddenly you break the routine. Instead of using once a month, you say, oh, you know what, I can't wait for the end of the month. So I'm going to pick up and use today. Um, and after a while, you keep breaking your routine and then your tolerance level also goes um, and after that, uh, our bodies adjust and the effects of the ice are no longer the same and we need more, you know? That's right, that's right. And after a while, this is where the, the, the problem starts, is that the risk of our using increases and the consequences yeah. of our using increases and we think it's acceptable. And that's when jail happens. That's when hospitals happen. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say, um, that's, that's right, Jose, you know, our... our um our boundaries get pushed out further, and, and you know we, we we something we didn't do once before we we, we, we will do and we will try and we um, to get um, whatever we need to be able to to fund that drug or you know to, to any way to get that that quick fix and and you know if you start pushing these boundaries out, one day there is no boundary and you know the person that you that you were, where, where you had morals and values and, and all this, they are no more. And so you lose your identity. And, and I guess that um, that's part of my rock bottom as well. Also, I could, I could be able to, you know, you get caught up and you, you are the person of the moment. But then if you have that moment of clarity where you can reflect at who you once were and, and know that these are certain things that I didn't do, and, and you can you can say to yourself, well, you know, what am I going to do about that? And um, I mean, um, you know, Trent, what, what can you say um, in regards to that to the person that you that you were in the beginning in your early youth, um, and, and to the point of your, your full blown addiction? Could, could you see the change in the person that you you once were and the boundaries that you once um, uh, crossed? All I can say to that question is I had um, a, a really good mother 
a, a really good father. They've never like really had been around the 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 drug scene like it wasn't in their era like but they they gave me a set of um morals and values in life and that's what was taken away from me when i i used drugs like um it didn't happen straight away but over time like i i think i think the more i used ice the more the more like i, I started with just a point and then I'd use half a gram to a gram a day and like that's when I'd have to do more and the values and morals went like with the guilt and the shame. I don't know. Yeah. Shame is a bad thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you used to cover that up. But yeah. I think I think I think I think the ice over time, it takes away your your values and your morals. It, uh, yeah, and I agree. It, yeah, and we do. We take that uh, the drug to to mask those feelings. You know, it, it masks everything. It masks the feelings we feel. Um, it masks your appetite. It, it masks your um, how tired you get. Um, so, and it's not really until you stop and you take that sober moment to be able to reflect and, and realize what you've become. Yeah. And how about your health? Has it affected? Oh yeah, it's like I've got um, war wounds. I call them. Like um, I've broken bones. I've, I'm going to for an operation in a couple of days for a hernia. Like I, I, I I've um, nearly had my feet chopped off. At, like my toe chopped off at one stage, and like I had ulcers on my feet. Just. Yeah, the neglect, like, um, that you give yourself. Like, I was really sick, not just physically, mentally. I was physically unwell at the end of my years. In, or when, I, when I did want to get clean, but, yeah, yeah. For me, um, you know, like, it, the physical, when you're in that addiction, the physical side of things, you, you are neglecting yourself. Um, physically and you're not eating properly, you're malnourished and you're sleeping. But um, for me, um, the, the psychological effects um, and uh, and I think that that um, fueled my use because I was suffering um, from, you know, things as, as a child and then relationships in my, my adult life. Um, and and uh, even now that I've, I've, I'm not in addiction at, at the moment, um, some of those um, situations I have to come to terms with um, now that the music stopped and I have to, um, you know, fa face it and, and, and sort of um, fathom what's happened. Um, and I, I guess, um, you know, forums such as this, to, to come and talk about it and, and, and relate to others, um, I won't get into my deepest darkest um, situations right now but believe me they are there and um i do have moments still where you know before before i drift off to sleep i, I have to deal with that and 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 then you know push it push it down and, and then try and put myself to sleep and and or there'll be other little triggers um through the day i might see a movie or a song might come on or whatever you know um just today <coughs> Me and Jose, we went down to the community centre and we, we ran into a couple of people in active addiction there. And, and, and I just looked at the people and I, it reminded me, I understand what these people are going through. Um, <clears throat> so um, my physical he uh, health, because I was in addiction, I'm, I'm 40 now, um, and I was, there was moments there when I wasn't using, but you know, it'd be a solid 20 years of using. Um, my physical health, physical health's not too bad, considering, but my 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 psychological health is still um, it's still recovering. It, and, and you know, like I say, things such as this they do help. Um, we we are talking about this level of um, uh, harmful dependency level, you know, and we have unpacked some areas in our life that will fall apart when we, when we use drugs and, and, and Trent talking about health, physical health, mental health, 
our emotional well-being. We talk about um, financial um, consequences of actions. Uh, we met someone today who told us that the ice at the moment is worth $750 a gram. Right. And, and, and what that means is that it, it doesn't mean people don't enter the cycle of addiction. What that means is that people now make do. Um, if you want Centrelink, for example, well, what you do is, well, the priority is the drugs, and then you will have to go without food, without accommodation. Um, but they, they, we, we see the consequences because we see it in Today Tonight or um, Current Affair or in the news. But, but there are consequences that is quite close and we don't see it out there in the public. And that's what I call the spiritual consequences. You talk about shame, you know, um, because of the things we do for a family. You might go this way. Like, I start, you know, um, I was, I'm, I'm Filipino migrant this country. And, and as such, we are very close-knit family. Um, you know, I, I, my, my mom was a single parent. Um, I helped my mom um, put my other siblings through to school uh, and before addiction touched my life. Um, and and w at the peak of my full-blown addiction, my family had nothing to do with me. Mm. So these are the consequences of my actions. You don't see this. Now, for a, a Filipino close-knit family, for them to disown me, I'll tell you, that shows you, puts it in perspective how bad... I got an, an, when I was an, an ice addict. Um, well, was that your experience? Yeah, I mean, um, my mother, um, she, she's a good woman, uh, and she she she, um, she would stick by her children through anything, anything and everything. But um, there was a point where Mum said that she had to, you know, step away and and step back from me. Um, and 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 just knowing that, and at the time I, I was using drugs, I did. I, I knew that mum wasn't in touch with me as much, but, um, and, you know, there'll be times when I, I'd, I'd always, you know, ring up, Can I, you know, $50 this, $50 that, and it got to the point where she'd say, no, I haven't got it. Um, but, you know, after all this, um, you know, when we rekindled our relationship, um, you know, she, she actually told me, yeah, Ben, we, I had to, we had to step back from you. And, um, and you know, that hurt me because... Um, because I'd hurt my mother, and, and um, like I say, my mother, she, she loves all her children, and the fact that she had to um, sort of, you know, put things on the skids and, and, and step back from one of her kids because of his addiction, um, that, that hurts a little bit, you know. Um, but um, the fact that I've um, I've put the effort in to um, to clean myself up, um, the fact that I have a loving God in my life. The fact that I've got um, um, like-minded people around me that can, can give me the support that I need, um, the fact that I belong to a, a church that's, um, that I love to be part of, um, that's actively out there helping other people, the fact that I'm part of the anti-ice campaign, um, all these things um, help me with my recovery and they help me um, uh, recognise each day that I'm on the right track and I'm doing the right thing. And, you know, to see my mother, um, you know, the sparkle in her eye and say, I'm proud of your son, that speaks volumes. And, you know, um, we, we, you know, tw 12 months ago, she wouldn't have been able to say that and she wouldn't have even known. She, she actually said, I, I thought I'd lost my son. And so, you know, like I say, I owe it to my family and I owe it to myself. And, you know... For, through everything that I, I did in addiction and, you know, the, even the, the reasons why I did it, this is a better life. And this is, to, to have the people that care about you, um, to, 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 see, to see their reflection and to know that you're on the right track and you're doing, doing okay, it, it's, so much, it, it, it's so much better than just a, 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 a quick fix. And, you know, I can sleep easily at night now knowing that, um, that I've, I've put my, my mother's heart at ease and that, uh, that my future is bright. And that's all, all because I'm not in addiction anymore. And, you know, the, the future for me is bright and, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Trent. Yeah. Um, so what, what other effects, um, you know, in regards to... to 
like your know, the law um can can we t- you know can you touch on have you have you ever been had troubles with the law um you know in in relate relation to this this drug uh yeah Yeah, I, I, I touched on it before, like I found jail early, like um, to, um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm still um, clearing the wreckage of my past, um, but it's easier doing it without ice in my system, like, for a long time, um, I'd, 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 I'd be using up to the stage where I went to jail and then I'd, I'd stay off the ice while I was in jail and as soon as I walked out of jail, like, I'd go straight and get on knowing that in six weeks that I'd be back in jail. Like, I'd, I wouldn't even turn up to parole. Like, it, as soon as I... Uh, like, I knew the patterns that would go with it. Like, the, like I even knew the lying, the cheating and stealing would be coming back within a day. I knew that the police would be after me within six weeks. Like, I knew the, the pattern straight down and I still wanted to use at that time. Like, the, the compulsion obsession was stuck there to use. Like, at... I don't know, like, just listening to Benny talk about his family. Like, I, I lost a girlfriend to addiction, like, while I was in jail, and and, and my mother, like, um, yeah, and, and I don't know, like, I, I still used drugs, like, after, after that. Like, that's how powerful it is. Like, I had... Like, I, my mother, like, dying, like, while I was in jail, like, it, it hurt me. But, um, yeah, I don't know, I'll get, a bit of, I'll get a bit emotional talking about it because I'll never um, be able to repay her for her love and care that she never gave up on me. Like, she was always unconditional, always had that unconditional love. But, yeah, like, the, the law was always right of me like yeah like and 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 if i kept on using like i'd probably be back in jail now like um yeah see um the journey of addiction you know when we talk about it in, in a format like this there are so many things to to unpack you know and 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 this relationship is 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 a big area you know and because you lose, you lose a lot of relationships along the way. Not just family as well, but but friends because you initially have friends that weren't using, and after a while you start gravitating to people who are using, and you and you forget those things. And and my consequences of, of that for me is, like I said, I've done eight years prison out of thirteen years in addiction. And I remember distinctly the time when I got released from Bathurst Prison after doing two and a half years. When I was released, the one loneliest feeling I felt in this world was when you got out the, you know, at the other end of that gate and there's no one waiting for you and then just realize how bad you must be, what you've done when no one is waiting for you. But still the penny didn't drop. It took another 10 years before um, I, I, I got myself clean. So we talked about the consequences of you know, the areas that fall apart in our life when we reach that stage of harmful dependency and when our addiction is full-blown. But we're here today because... We got clean. That's right. right. So we, we experienced that rock bottom, and there is a 12-step program. The, the first step of the 12-step program acknowledges that. Um, what's, what's the first step? We admitted that we're We admitted powerless, that we're powerless, powerless over our addiction, addiction our and our lives are becoming manageable, right? Now, for all addicts in recovery, we go through that, that the, real, the awareness that I am powerless over drugs or over my addiction. And, that, and the second part is the most important because just the awareness that I'm powerless over drugs, some people will say, all right, well, all I have to do is not use at all. Simple. 
But the fact of the matter is, the second part of the problem is that my life had become unmanageable. And what that means is, I can't manage my using. If it was that simple for me to give up drugs, I would have done it, right? And I won't relapse. But the part, the second part is that my life had actually, I can't manage my life. Therefore, I need help. Someone needs to come in and manage my life for me. Uh, and, and this is where we're at. Um, and and we'll, we'll, the, the, the remaining part of this, of this show, we are going to talk about how we got clean, how you got clean, because Trent, you come into a drug and alcohol rehab, and um, you got out of that program, and you were clean for quite a while, yeah? You want to tell us about that story? I was, um, I was a shot duck. Right before, I don't even know how I made it to detox. Like I, I vaguely do. Like it seemed like a blur. Um, I was absolutely exhausted. I was on parole, and um, I think I was, I was lucky that I had a, a parole officer that saw how sick, and they gave me a a choice like of um, doing this merit program and, and a part of that merit program was to go for a detox and then like I, I, I went to detox and then I um, ended up going into a, a rehab like just up the road here called Adele and through that like um, I was shown where meetings were like I, I was fed I was bedded, like I had a bed, like I was homeless before I um yeah, made it there and then um yeah, like a part of that program is doing NA meetings and, and the upper fellowship AA. Um I was introduced to people in the rooms up down here which um they're still in my life today. It hasn't been easy. Like I got nine and a half months clean. Um, I the COVID stuff. Like it sort of threw a bit of a um, spanner in the works for me. Like um, early recovery is hard. Like I, it's a big struggle. Like you got to hang on to your chair. Like that's just one of the sayings. And and um, yeah, I don't know. Like I. I had a uh, I had a one day bust like a couple of weeks ago, but that you know like the yeah, but I, I think the love in the rooms of NA like brought me back quicker, you know like um, yeah I don't know like I'm I'm still struggling today, but um, I don't know but I've got a lot more hope in my life like and. I've got good people like in, in my life. I try not to associate with people that are using, and you know, like um, I've just got a good network of people in my life, like through NA and um, through the rehab that I went through. Before, before I give you Ben, um, I just want to acknowledge Jenny Phillips here has a question, right? And we're going to answer it along the way. Um, and she says, "Is there anything you th that you think parole can help more in helping you to stop using drugs?" other than refer you to drug counselling and rehab in your experience. Now, rehab and drug counselling does play a very important part. But we're going to talk, uh, Jenny, a lot way, and perhaps you can grab um, the crux of uh, the, the recovery, um, what else we can do outside those things that, that you mentioned. Um, uh, ben? Okay, so, well, I think what, what was... Um what um, contributed to my success was the fact that I was I re removed myself from the town where I was in active addiction. So, um, just like what Trent said, you know, he 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 finds success by, by um, surrounding himself around it, um, uh, good people and people that aren't in addiction. Um, and so I think that that's a that's a key point for everyone. Um, it may mean that you have to uh, remove yourself from the town that you're in for a moment. Um, and, and for me, that's what I found. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to come down to my family in Coffs Harbour. 
um, and they took me in. Um, like I said, if I if I'd stayed in Toowoomba, I wasn't gonna um, be able to uh, have success in my recovery. So I think um, uh, you know if you, you if you're able to remove yourself from the town or the, you know the the district or the, the the people that that you're using with, you need to remove yourself away from them, and and it may it may mean you have to cut ties with um, some friends um, because. You know this, that that um, influence and that and that that pressure, being around people in addiction, you know they may want what's best for you, but a person in addiction can't help another person in addiction. Let's be honest. So I think that's um, that's a key point in in my recovery, um, <coughs> and also I believe the the um, there needs to be a transformation within, um, uh, uh, you know. You can take yourself out of addiction, but if you're still that same creature that you were in, in addiction, if you're still that same creature in a sober life, you're not going to have success, long-term success, I don't believe. You need to have a transformation within. Now, um, for me, that transformation was in the way of um, um, a Christian, having a, um, a Christian God in my life. And, you know, that, that's played the major part in being able to transform that old man into this new being. And, you know, I have a different outlook on life. I have a different appreciation. And, you know, it's, um, it's in the form of a salvation. And um, when we talk of salvation, that's not a spiritual thing. Salvation is a worldly thing. And it's for everyone. It's, it's on offer to everyone. Now, if you're, if you're not, not sure about how that all works, go to your um, local Christian groups and give it a try. Don't knock it until you try it because um, if, that, if, that's, if that's the key, and believe me it is, to, to transforming you into that new person, then it's worth it. And, and, when I, and if you do decide to go along and seek some spiritual guidance, give it a chance to work. Um, I, I can't... I can't say enough. Um, so that's that's first and foremost that. The other thing is, like I said previous, remove yourself from that situation, being around those people, and 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 and, and give yourself a chance to um, and surround yourself with um, good 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 people that have good intentions for you. Let, let me just quickly un un unpack what you said about extricating yourself from the place where you did the damage in terms of addiction. Um, there is some truth to that. I was from Sydney originally, and when I moved to Coffs and I got clean, I made a conscious effort. I'm not going to go back to that environment where I did the damage. I'm going to stay in Coffs Harbour. Trent also stayed in Coffs Harbour. We, we, we have different, different outcomes. There is also uh, an argument for this, what we believe... It, Geographical can't just fix your problem unless you work yourself from, from the inside. That's one. And secondly, you might extricate yourself from the old haunting grounds, but when you arrive at your new place, your attitude and your thinking hasn't, the same, hasn't changed, and you, are en you, you will end up looking for the same sort of people that you were hanging around with in addiction. So it will be only a matter of time, and invariably you will, you will pick up. So it's not just a matter of extricating yourself. Um, another thing that Ben talked about unpacked this concept of, of God. And, um, and, and a lot of people will, will say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This, this, is, this, is, a, is this a, a, a religious thing? Um, the program that worked in my life, the program that worked in Ben's life, the program that worked in Trent's life, and not just us here, but the program that worked in many countless lives globally, um, and, and I've, I've, I've traveled in, in, in a country which is used ice, you know, probably the, the usage of ice per capita is more than Australia, and I've met a lot of, of, of ice addicts in that country. The concept, the paradigm or the model that actually works is, is this that I, I can't manage my life and I need someone else to manage that life and that someone else is God. 
and you find God along the way in your journey. In my case, I found God um, through the ministry of the Salvation Army because they were present in that rehab I went to. They were a big, a big presence. Uh, and, 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 but Trent is in the Salvation Army, and I know many other people that don't belong to, to any church, but they have discovered God. And, and, and this, is, this is the paradigm of, that recover, of recovery, is that I can't do it myself. There is not amount of, 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 of positive mental attitude or positivity I can apply that will make me stop using. I have to surrender, and I have to find that God of my understanding and turn my will over to the care of the God who will then manage my life. And this is how the program works that work in our lives today. Would, would, would that be accurate, Ben? Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it, I think it's a key aspect that a lot of people that they, they miss um, for, for long-term recovery. Um, and like I said, it's, it's all to do with that transformation of that old man into that new being. And, you know, you see a lot of these people, they, they may, may go for a period of being sober, but they're still that same person within, they're still that same person that, that they were in addiction, they're just not in active addiction at the time. And it's only a matter of time until they will pick up. And I believe if you've, you have that, that, that spiritual aspect, that spiritual guidance that, and that comfort and that understanding that, that you can find in the scriptures, you are going to have a, a, a much higher success success rate you have a, a better a, a positive intention in your life and, and, and it won't just affect that that aspect of your life it'll affect all aspects of your life you know your relationships you know you, your um your your um the way you interact with people and the way you you see yourself um so um if you you know i understand that some people are a bit they might be a bit hesitant because they don't fully understand what it encompasses but you know that's all right. Um, if you if you do you know seek out that that spiritual guidance, all I can advise: give it a chance to work. Don't just write it off straight away because it's one of them things you only gonna get, you're only going to get what you put into it. So if you write it off and you don't give it the power it deserves, it's not going to work. It's like, it's like words such as, um, you know, honesty, integrity and, and respect and trust. You know, people scoff at these words. But unless you believe in these words, then they don't have power. And it's the same with God. You need to give him that power. You need to, to um, want him in your life. And then he can, has the chance. Because he's not going to come knocking on your, on your door. You have to come to go to him. And if you, if you show that, that intention... Towards God, it, it, it can and it does work in your life. Um, um, prove me wrong, you know. That's all I've got to say because it, that's what worked for me. Um, ben, uh, g- going back to Jenny's question earlier on, you know, what, what do you do um, apart from uh, the psychologist or, or, or counsellor? What, what can probation and parole help? Um, probation and parole and Coffs Harbour actually sometimes send their clients and, and, and we sit down with them and we talk one-on-one. And I've done, uh, I've spoken to two probation and parole clients in Coffs Harbour in the last six months, for example. Um, when we talk about involvement in a church, the reason for that is you need a support. Support is very important. Um, you can also get your support from local NA meetings. The love that you experience from, from people with, you know, with the same story and experiences will help you along the way. And that's your story, you know. Um, I, I've, I, my recovery started with NA and, and, and um, I had a, an NA sponsor and, 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 and that helped me navigate through the, the minefields of sobriety because especially when you first recover, Reco- recovery is hard work, and, and life don't change overnight. When I left that rehab, I was f- broke. I was broke. I was in Centrelink, and I'm saying to myself, what's the point of being sober and broke? I'd rather be high and, 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 and broke rather than be sober and, and broke. Why? Because it masks the pain. Um, and, and you know very well what I'm talking about. 
But it was because I was surrounded myself with people who had nothing else but, but the intention so that I recover, um, being next to my sponsor, um, and, 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 and then the church. Um, I, I know church is like, and a lot of people probably watching this, oh, church, uh, no, this, uh, are you guys, um, you know, we, we sometimes get flack when we mention churches, but look at it in terms of it is a support structure that is very important. And why church? Well, you know what? The simple fact is when you need help out there in the community, who comes first? It's always the people in churches, yeah. right? <laughs> It's always the people in churches. And, and, and this is where you get your support structure. They give you the love um, and, and the local NA fellowship as well. But, you know, it is about being involved with something bigger than yourself. It is about being involved with something bigger than, than, than your drug addiction. Um, now, let's talk about what well, we're unpacked. Now, I had to go to rehab when I got clean. You had to go to rehab to get clean. Um, I got clean from my first attempt. You got clean from your first attempt. You got clean, but you picked up, and now you're on the road to recovery again, right? Now, I need to go to rehab because, you know, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't have. <laughs> I wouldn't have been clean now, and, 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 unless the court sent me there, right? It, it took an act of God manifested through the drug court of New South Wales for me to get clean. So it was what I referred to as God's grace, manifested through the exponent of God's kingdom, which is a drug court in New South Wales, and said, Mate, you have to go to a rehab, right? You, you, you've, you've done it your way for 13 years, and it didn't help. Go to rehab and see you got clean. And that's my journey. You didn't go to rehab. No, no, I didn't go to rehab. Um, I, Like I said, I got to a point where... Um, I was living in a shipping container and I'd had enough. So um, so I come down to Coffs Harbour where my parents live. Now, the, 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 that, that key point there is I removed myself from where my influences were. And that's exactly what happens when you get um, put into rehab, I guess. You, you're removing yourself. So I guess all the boys down in Sydney, they get sent up to Coffs Harbour and I, I guess the boys from Coffs Harbour get sent down to Sydney. So, you know, it goes back to that key, um, key point we made. Remove yourself from that, that, that um, where, wherever that influence is, is for you. Um, I, I actually seen an article in the newspaper. It was the anti-ice campaign and it was a few lads. I think Matty Malloy, who's up the back there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, acknowledge Matt Malloy's yeah, Matt present. Malloy. He's from the Coffs we've, Harbour. We've got two but Matt's. He's out there at the sound room. Matt, Matt Miller and Matt Malloy. Anyway, they were in the paper and they, they were doing the, the, the hand signal not even once. And I was thinking, what's this all about? Anyway, um, it was a, a WOW meeting. They were advertising. Oh, well, it was for the anti-ice campaign. But also we do a, um, a WOW, which is worship on Wednesday with the Salvation Army. Um, so I've come along to the to one of the meetings, um, <coughs> and and then I let myself known, um, and then you know it went from there. So I guess um, involving myself in in these programs, such as the, the NA program, the the Any Ice um, campaign. I'm secretary down here of the um, Any Ice campaign. So I think. Involving myself in, in into these programs it, it, that's helped me keep on track, um, and and like I say, oh, being away from um, being away from the influence of, of the, the, you know the people I was using with, and having that Christian um, spiritual guidance in the form of God and the Holy Bible that helps me. Um, you know, me and Jose we both. Uh, we're members of the Salvation Army as well, and and, and they have affiliations with um, the drug and alcohol rehab here in Coffs Harbour. So, you know, it's um, we're we're around these sorts of people. We we inject ourselves into these um, into these programs, and that's what helps me. And you know, I I haven't picked up for uh, it's gone on 12 months. It's over 12 months now. Um, I haven't drank alcohol since November last year, and I, I don't. I don't have a need or want to do that now. I, because I know, look, I, I know the, the, what the drug does to you. I know the feeling it gives you. But it, for me to, to pick up today and use and throw all that good hard work down the, down the, um, the drain, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to me. Um, 
you know, I've come so far in my walk. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's getting better and better. Um, and, you know, I, I've got so much more clarity. I think a lot clearer. I sleep well. I don't have stress hanging over my head. Like I said, I've got a few demons I have to face, um, yeah, you know, from, from, you know, now that I've stopped and, 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 and have to process all this. But overall, um, it's not worth it to me to pick up. It really isn't because, like I say, if I was to pick up today or whatever, my mother's going to know. My friends are going to know. I'm not going to function. I'm going to have so much guilt and shame that I have to um, deal with. Or for that initial hit, it's just not worth it. So, yeah. Um, we, we have unpacked a lot a lot tonight. And, and thank you so much, Trent, for being here and for your candor and for your honesty. Um, and, you know, you, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. Recovery is a very – is a thing we do that involves a lot of hard work. It is not – it is not easy. There's a lot of hard work involved. I've, I'm clean now for, for almost five years. Um, I, I've never had a need to use. Um, in, in, in the 12-step fellowship, they talk about one of the promises of, of, of doing this program is freedom from active addiction. And it is a place you arrive at when, when you do the program. Um, and, and one of the literatures of the 12 steps, never have we seen a person fail who thoroughly follow our path, right? And it's a big claim. Never have we seen a person fail who thoroughly follow our path. Um, and the big part of that path is finding out what is God's will in my life. And my God's will in the beginning is simply don't pick up. <laughs> that is not part of my, my intention for creating you is don't use drugs. Just don't pick up. And the second part is I have to pray for the power to carry out God's will in my life. It is quite simple. I don't need to complicate it. Just don't pick up whatever happens and pray for the power to be able to carry that out. Now, eventually, God's will in your life will get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It'll get bigger and bigger. My family, for example, is a big part of my life today. Um, I'm 50 years of age, and, um, and Ben and I have gone back to university, um, and I use that as a metaphor for recovery, you know. When we did the first semester, oh my God, the first, first essay, it was so difficult, I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit because things were not sinking in. When you're 50 and you're studying, things just don't stick into your memory anymore. Um, and when I submitted my first essay, it came back and said, you're not academic enough. It wasn't academic enough, but you know what? It's a metaphor for recovery. We worked hard and we worked days and, and we finished the semester with, with, with flying colors. And, and, and this is what recovery is about. It's a lot of hard work, but eventually you start building a life you don't want to lose to drug addiction. And, and, um, and, and Strength explained earlier, you know, it is very hard work. But he's back, even though he's back, because he knows what's at stake. Um, he knows what, what awaits, um, and I'm very proud of you for being back. You, yeah, you know, and, and we hope that we will see you soon again, and we'll talk about progress the next time we do a show. You want to close? Yeah, I, I just want to, um, um, I appreciate Trent's for his honesty, and, and to be able to come, come forward and say, you know, I, I had a moment of, re, um, of a stumble, and I was, um, but I realised, um, that, that you know my mistake and whatnot. I think that that takes courage to come up there and do that, and I, I admire you for being able to do that. Um, and and we, we appreciate that you you were able to come forward and do that with us. Now we're going to wrap it up. Um, we're nearly nearly finished for the night. We'll we're think thank Matt, Matt Miller again. Thank you, Matt. Thank for, you, Matt. <laughs> for you know taking time from your family to be here with us. Yeah. And I thank the um, Salvation Army Church again, Major Andrew, Major Janet for making this possible, um, and they're a very big part of our life um, in, in recovery. So thank you very much, and God bless you all, and we'll see you soon in the future. Thanks, guys. God Bye. bless. Bye. Thanks, Trent. No worries, mate. Well, mate. Thank you. <laughs> oh, did I, I cancelled it. Thank you. <laughs>